The mysterious alien objects of King Solomon of ancient Israel. He was King David's son, as we know, the third king of ancient Israel. And he was also famous for his wisdom. And here we have an image of his throne and the steps to his thrones. You can see it's flanked by statues of lions. It said that uh, each step had a pressure plate. And then when the king stepped on each step, the lions would turn to face him as he went up towards his throne. And next you'll see Solomon's labyrinth. Now around the first millennium BC, King Solomon, the third king of Israel, was the most powerful man of his time. He's also credited with building the first temple of Jerusalem. He's described in the Bible and legends as a character of incredible abilities. In fact, according to the same traditions, inside the building that bears his name as Solomon's temple were also kept mysterious objects with strange properties that could be considered as products of a superior technology for its time or even have, having uh, alien origins. Solomon, the son of David and Bathsheba, third king of Israel, ascended the throne of Israel in 972 BC. He reigned for 40 years. At some point, he built the famous temple in which several sacred objects of the worship of the Israelites were placed. The so-called tabernacle, according to information given in the Old Testament, was a very special portable holy building essentially a tent of the Israelites with strange non-physical properties which was built after God's command to Moses when Moses received all the details and instructions for construction. The tabernacle was seen as a dwelling place of God but at the same time the meeting point of God with the children of Israel. One of the mysterious properties of the tabernacle was that every time Moses entered the tabernacle a cloud, a mist like a curtain, covered the entrance. In this way, God manifested his presence in order to speak with Moses. Because, therefore, the interior of the tent witnessed the appearance of God, it was called the tent of witness, that is, a tent of testimony, or the presence of God. When the pillar of cloud dispersed from the entrance of the tabernacle, it meant God's conversation with Moses had ended. The Israelites constantly carried the tabernacle wherever they went, but stopped doing so when they conquered the land of Canaan. It was David who planned to build the permanent building, the temple, to replace the tabernacle. However, it was his son Solomon who supervised the building. It was a commandment of God. Now, with the same symbolism of the objects of the tabernacle, the same basic ceremonial furniture and almost the same utensils and objects that were in it, a much larger edifice was built by Solomon, always maintaining the sacred proportions and according to the original instructions. In addition to the tabernacle, some other mysterious objects had been placed inside Solomon's temple. The Ark of the Covenant was the most sacred object to the Israelites. It contained the Ten Commandments on two stone tablets, but only the outer part was visible. It was built by Moses according to specifications given to him by God. Originally, it was kept inside the tabernacle and indicated that God was among the people of Israel and communicated with them when needed. The Ark of the Covenant had the Ten Commandments, two stone slabs. It also had a pot of manna and the budding rod of Aaron, which was a proof that God selected Aaron to be the high priest of Israel. Aaron was a 70-year-old older brother uh, uh, to Moses. Now during its transport, the ark was always covered with seal skin and a blue cloth. The site was always very carefully hidden, which must not have been a coincidence since when 70 of the clan members happened to look at the ark, they were automatically killed. It was said to be a punishment from God. In the battles that took place, the ark of the covenant preceded the people as a divine shield of protection. According to Jewish tradition, wherever it passed, it burned the thorn bushes and other obstacles it might encounter on the way. While sparks emitted from the two facing cherubs on it, its lid could kill snakes, scorpions, and other dangerous animals. Sparks. When they were crossing the Jordan River, as soon as the feet of the priest carrying the, the ark 
touched the waters of the Jordan River, they disappeared or evaporated, and the river dried up. But as soon as they crossed to the other side, the waters returned, according to Joshua. When it had to be carried on an ox cart, and a driver reached out his hand to keep the ark from falling on the rough road, he himself fell dead from touching it. When Solomon's temple was inaugurated, the Ark of the Covenant was placed there with special care and reverence, and as soon as the priests left the Holy of Holies, the temple was filled with a cloud, which they interpreted as indicating that the glory of the Lord had filled his house. It's said that inside the Ark, in addition to the tablets, the Ten Commandments, was kept the piece of the manna, which was given as food to the people in the desert for the first time, as a provision of God. It was also placed, uh, they also placed Aaron's magical budding rod, which turned into a, th a threatening serpent against Pharaoh, and again into a serpent which polluted the Nile and killed the fish, and finally which blossomed when it was placed inside the tabernacle. That was the rod of Aaron. Now, of course, inside the temple, there were many other sacred objects, such as the sacrificial altar, the seven light lit lamp uh, that originally burned in the Holy of Holies of the tabernacle and over time became a symbol of the Israelites and the Jewish religion. Also, there was the sea of the... Um, the the uh, cauldron of the sea was filled with water. It was a brass cauldron filled with water, which was a large copper water tank there was still incense and more and according to various traditions and legends king solomon is said to have had flying carpets one carpet in fact was supposed to be 60 miles long and 60 miles wide capable of carrying 40,000 men i guess it was basically a ufo now if we were craft of some kind if we would like to stay in this improbable version then perhaps this was also guarded by Solomon and the flying carpets that emitted rays of light and fire inside the temple he had built. The lightning rods of Solomon's temple, 24 in number, are said to have been placed at various points on the roof of the temple, apparently not at random, to protect it from the lightning of the heavens. And according to a legend, King Solomon subdued and imprisoned 72 demons in a copper vessel, as a gift to humanity. In fact, it's assumed that this story became a source of inspiration for the book Solomonic, the key of Solomon, King Solomon, although there is no reference to these spirits, while according to historians, it was written around the 14th and 16th century by an unknown author. After the capture and destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 587 BC, all of these were lost, disappeared, stolen, or very well hidden somewhere else. In fact, according to the Old Testament, when Nebuchadnezzar captured three wise men from Solomon's temple and later threw them into the fire, they did not burn, but another form appeared. Modern hypothesis considered that a gate was opened, the gate that uh, opened in Iraq in the war for its acquisition between uh, U.S. and Saddam Hussein, perhaps. Well, it's obviously a divine presence, and they said it was the uh, foreshowing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, could any of these above contain truths, and to what extent? And if it were true, then, in modern terms, could we not say that these objects were of extraterrestrial origin, since there was supposed to be no civilization that possessed this kind of advanced technology? Of course, anyone can easily argue that they had a divine origin, or simply the imagination of those who narrated them, as well as those, who's, those who wrote them. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.